Hold on, hold on, hold on a second. You're recording the meeting. Every time, every time we go go through this. Yep. Thank you for checking out the Boys Quarter podcast, where we are in the compound, but we don't belong in the main house. Um, we're available, so feel free to go and check us out on all the audio platforms. But since you are here, please do click the like button. Make sure you're subscribed. And let's get into this content. You didn't tell me, you said, are you ready now? Next thing you know, this meeting's being recorded. I was like, I ain't ready to make my statement. What do you they think should do that. What they do should do that. The, the, the they should do that. I know, I know the first, like, gang, gang members who had to do a Zoom meeting during lockdown. This means being recorded. Yo, yo, nigga, you know we don't do no recording around here. <laughs> but you're a guest on Vlad's podcast. I don't give a fuck where I am, nigga. <laughs> Oh, do no recordings. I watched the Vlad interview with Mac 10. He is an OG OG. Every question Vlad asked him, he asked him back. Well, what's the point of the interview then? But we didn't tell him nothing. He was like, so, um, duh, 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 and then the cops came through. That what they said? <laughs> <laughs> He's too street. Didn't confirm, didn't deny anything. What? I don't even understand. Why do people go on Vlad TV? Do you think Mac? Do you think Mac Ten's been back? Why did he go? Is what I'm asking. But you know, you know, it's always an interesting. You know, he's doing BG knockout and all these OGs. So you know, Mac Ten's you know the next level. You can't get Ice Cube, and so you know, you probably think, yeah, this is a good you know opportunity. But Mac Ten's just not. That's why he's not a a, 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 a forefront you know rapping artist because he's just, he's a street nigga. Okay, but still, it does not answer my question. Why do these guys go on Vlad? Like it, it really. Obviously, you might, you might, you, I don't know why at the time what was going on. Obviously, Vlad approaches people. Can we get an interview? He might be promoting an album or something like that. I don't know. But the interview was very. It was the best interview I've ever seen. I don't particularly. Vlad sensationalizes hood culture. He loves the. As soon as you come out of prison, you're on Vlad's TV. So you were selling packs at four, right? It's like you know they're trying to redeem, redeem themselves and not necessarily glorify it. I love when a when a street guy's on on the on the. I ain't trying to glorify none of this, but um, I, I was moving like a hundred keys when I was four. Was like, but you ain't trying to glorify, huh? <laughs> you can't help but talk part, about. I, I understand. He's like, he's actually yeah. just giving you the facts. It's the right, but the facts are fascinating. They sound amazing. You know, I had like the um the two the two hummers with the the, the low riders. That's you know, that's, that, that, that's where I'm like, you're glorifying this. Oh no, that's when I was at my lowest though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, yeah. You ever hear when they try to talk about how girls is around at the time? They're like, yeah, we had girls. Girls is come, go. We ain't even respect none of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, so many hoes. Too many hoes. Like, like, okay, guy, we get it. Are you sure you're not glorifying this? Because the way that these guys talk about the, really, like that kind of attention. You can't really talk about that without some kind of infamy. You know, some kind of, wow, this is crazy. Like, if Escobar was to tell his story, you're going to be like, man, I, I want to be Escobar. Bro, it just reminds me of um, pastors that used to do road or used to be really bad before God saved them and they gave their life to the ministry. And they and when they, when, they, when they're preaching, they want to let you know that they got street credibility, that they used to do mad stuff. Yeah. So they start telling you what they used to do, but it sounds like they miss it. It sounds yeah. like they, they they be telling you, you know, I was a bad guy. I was I was sleeping with girls. I, I was sleeping with ganja. Guys. So now I don't take your money legally. Oh. <laughs> no, I just promise you a house in heaven. <laughs> it's, um... Hey, you know what, yeah? I'm surprised drug dealers don't start churches. It's a nice cash-only business. I mean, it's, everything's tax-free. It's a cash-only business, you know? And nobody, although people are trying to do chip and pin, you know the pastors be hearing that. You know, we appreciate the car, but anytime we're, anywhere there's cash, please just drop it in. You do I like mean, a damn debit for tithes. You can do. Okay. You can do it. You can do it so they take it out your check before they even tax you. So then you tax. So you got two tax people taxing you. Well, yeah. I mean, when you got that, when you got that pay slip, everybody's getting their money, whether it's student loan or uh, or these tax people or pensions or whoever. But you can put but, like yo, you can so, put charitable so donations they, on there. So why do they frown on people who want to sell drugs? I mean, how are you, how else you going to pay off these student loans? I mean, I can get a job. <laughs> to be to be fair, like 
it's just to just to keep you going, man. No, no one's trying to. Not everybody's gonna flip and become a millionaire and be doing this ridiculous. How they? You know, why do we read books like Instant Millionaire? What's that? Sorry. So why do we read books like Instant Millionaire? Because the the hope of becoming a millionaire <laughs> is for everybody. The I'll reality my... of becoming a millionaire is for a few. Right. I asked my friend. I said, uh, she said she read Instant Millionaire. I said, how long was the book? She said about three hundred pages. I said, oh, that's 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 a bit too long for instant. <laughs> <laughs> that could give you two pages, but I ain't finished you know, three hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got a scratch card. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't just got bullet points in this motherfucker. I thought I just open up the book, do this, do this, and do that. Nah, man. Imagine instant noodles taking three hours to make. <laughs> 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 you look, come around, and I got that instant noodles on. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yo, we kind of hungry. <laughs> but you know, that's just um, human nature. Isn't it? It's not even, he's selling you a, a dream as well. He's trying to become that millionaire as well, and he can sell you the dream. What, you mean the pastor? No, the instant millionaire guy. Oh, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. The hope of becoming a millionaire is for everybody, the it's reality of it is for a few. That's the worst commodity in your life, hope. <laughs> I don't think it's the worst. What's the worst commodity then? Um, I think the the worst commodity is is fear. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think I think I think more has been done uh, in the na- in using fear as a commodity. More like worse has been done using fear than has been done using hope. You think so? I think worse has been done using hope. They use Interesting. hope. They use hope with Martin Luther King to disrail their whole movement. They you know? use they use fear to rally up people to hate people that they've never had any problem with. They're coming okay, to rape but, your women. They're coming to do this, and then all right, of a sudden, now you're on fear. But then they gave you an irrational hope of one day we'll be together. I mean, let to be honest. We're just arguing two sides of the same coin because I, I, yeah. I don't I don't think you can sell people I don't think you can adequately weaponize fear unless you offer some hope. Yeah, absolutely. So it's it's basically one and the same. It's like I have yeah. to tell you there's a big yeah. threat, then yeah. I need to present you with the option. So option of hope, yeah. yeah. But you can still make it if you go underneath. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, and yeah. that's the hope. I, I guess you're right, because they're one in the same. Because the same way you've done things out of fear, you've also done things out of hope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hope that you know. Which one's the most reject? Which one's the most disappointing? The feeling afterwards. Is it that conf- reaffirm- uh, that that um, is it reaffirming that you know I knew I should have been afraid in the first place, or that disappointment of man I just got my hopes up for nothing? Yeah, is it the same? Oh, that's. That's that's a tough one. I mean, the Bible says that hope deferred makes a heart sick. So it already recognizes. Whoa, 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 whoa. Spit that again. The Bible says that hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hmm. So it recognizes that having somebody's hopes dashed will eventually like poison their mind and their their well being and their their emotional health and so on. Uh, but in terms of fear, the Bible also makes it very clear. That's that enough fear. Yeah, thou should not fear. You shouldn't fear anything but the Lord. And even that fear is a reverence fear. It's not, mm-hmm. it's not, you know. So really and truly, I think, again, it goes back to the same point, man. Either one, I, I think feeling like, oh, I should have been more afraid and feeling like, oh, I shouldn't have been hopeful. I think it actually probably boils down to the exact same emotion of... Fear and hope. <laughs> of fear and hope and being disappointed with what life has presented you with. Mm. Having an expectation mm. and then having something that goes against it. Either way. Also, if you go in afraid, you know, you almost talk yourself into failing. Yeah. yeah well, I, mean, I, I walked, I drove, I drove with the handbrake on any motherfucker, anyway, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I do believe you should be fearless. Even if, even though I was yeah. being a bit cynical with the hope angle, but as much as hope is, I guess, you know, used as a as a carrot mm. sometimes mm. To, to mislead. And I feel like hope also kind of takes away the, the ability to be to get content. I mm. think in life you have to be content. Mm. Okay. You know, um, yeah, we do. I agree. You have to be content. And so what 
when people hope, they hope for more than what they even need. Like I remember Michael Odewale, of Michael Odewale said, I, I have to have like 88 billion before I can give a billion away. I said 88 billion. <laughs> Golly. My, my, let's go. Let's go. Eighty-seven. He's like, nah, I can't spare it, man. I ain't got it. I ain't got it. Eighty-eight. He said he needed eighty-eight billion before he could dash a billion. That means if he's on a million, he's not dashing anything. Bro, that that nigga gonna give you fifty dollars like Virgil, bro. He's gonna give you ten pounds. Like, hey, do something nice with that. <laughs> <laughs> so you just realize we don't hope for what is you know necessarily what we need. We hope for way more. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean that's, that's the thing, I right? So, obviously... I want to have a gated community. I don't want to have the best guards, you know? It's just always more than what we actually need. Of course. And and to be honest, that's kind of, in our minds, the only thing... When when Obama was writing the book, Audacity of Hope, The Audacity of Hope, I think the, the, the underlying concept is that hope is supposed to be used for things that are not normal. Like, to hope that... Um, you know, you can make minimum wage almost seems like a waste of hope to me. <laughs> but the reality is... <laughs> the reality is some of y'all need to hope for that. So, so, we are, so the reality is most of us, okay, some of us are not on minimum wage, but the majority of us, how much are we, how much are we killing minimum wage? Well, we like, what, a pound 50 more? <laughs> Bruh. You You'd know? be surprised, man. You'd be surprised how much that extra twenty three p on the minimum wage have I'm a motherfucker stunted. That's you'd what I'm stu- You'd be stunted on people that got minimum wage, like, oh, you're minimum wage, huh? Okay. How much you want? I'm on like ten pounds. How much you want? Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. You're gonna use that two pound to oppress the ten pound guy. Of course. Of course, of course you are. Of course. Im- Im- imagine, imagine, you make ten pound an hour trying to move to a girl who makes twelve. He's like, oh, I need to, I'm trying to move up. What's this? You're a bum. Like, it's, to be honest, everybody's kind of got their own... Every I think that's kind of what we do it for. Everybody needs somebody to look down on. To be fair, you don't need money to to, 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 to necessarily... Like, if you're good-looking, you can bypass the... the, the, the you can move to anyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, there, we, there are definitely... Women will, find out, women will find out a bit too late. And they'll even still fight for you because you're good-looking. If you're not good-looking, you have to have a bit of money in your pocket. Not too much. But you just have to be able to do it. You got to compensate somehow. Hundred percent, so, man. There's I'm, always there's always saying, exceptions to the rule, man. If you, I refuse, I refuse, I'm just gonna say I refuse to say anyone's good looking. He's not good looking. Everybody's good looking in their own right. But you know what I mean. If you ain't Devante with the shaved eyebrows and the genuine abs, you can't just be running up to him and talking about you know talk to me. We need, we need to update your references, man. No, 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 no. We're staying in my zones. I don't know. <laughs> your your good looking guy has been Devontae since the beginning of the podcast. But you know what? When I was growing up, it was only Devontae. And you know what? Most girls who grew up with Devontae won't like him now because he's a light skinned man. Mad. Look at Do you know him. what I mean? They're, they're now Maurice Chestnut and, you know, Lakeith and all these. Oh, Michael B. Jordan is the new, the new, the new cake mix. Yeah. Or, you know? or um, what's his name? Idris Elba. Oh, each other's not. He's, he's he's out the game now. He's more granddad. Is now. it? Oh, it's just out now. Wow. Yeah. I need to update my references. Yeah, you, told, you know what the funny thing? I got caught. A girl told me that. What's going on, brother? No, a girl Whoa. told me. That. No, wait, 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 wait. Are you playing chances right now, bro? No, nah, I'm not. You know. This little oh, Michael. Why are you on the pod with no trousers on, standing up in I've front got, of the I've camera, got, bro? I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got drawers on. I just have no trousers on. It's, 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 it's nice and hot in here, man. I'm, I'm taking it all in. <sighs> but you, you, you be fully clothed by the desk all the time. I mean, not when I'm on camera. Yeah, I'm on camera though. We're not, uh, we're not filming. We are. That's oh. the point. Yeah, but you can see the top half. Yeah, but you just stood up. That's how I saw. Okay, so what? You're not saying you've never seen, you've never seen digging drawers before. I don't want to see it, is what right. I'm saying. Because you're uncomfortable. Do you find me attractive or something? I don't need to find this. I don't you're need to see you're any you're brother relaxed. in it their is, boxes. It, it is what it is, bro. Get over it. You're making it seem as if, oh, relax, man. I just saw you in trust. You ain't been around You ain't been around the man them. Trust me, I've seen worse. <laughs> What's going on with the man them? You haven't seen? Yep. You haven't been on a lad's holiday where your boys just walking with their dicks out? Nick! <laughs> <laughs> One time here, my boy. My whole like, world is about to be rocked right now. <laughs> this is what, what you men are doing on the last holiday, oh, yeah? This is what you used to do with the white boys take it to another level. Black boy, we draw the line in it. But this is what you used to do all the time. You'll come out here, yeah? you'll pull his tickets out. Tell me, and you turn around, try to spit your dick in. <laughs> you wow. Because it's better for them, innit? 
Wow. When they say boys will be boys, it's not a joke. Boys are nasty. Wow. One time, my friend um, took a dump in the toilet in the hotel. Right? Yeah. Didn't flush it. I get a phone call at three in the morning. So you know who was calling me, right? <laughs> so I pick up the phone, hello. So he's like, for me, man, I'm trying to sleep, man. You're disturbing everyone. So can't take can't use it in the bathroom. So I was like, yeah, fair enough, respect, respect, my bad. I go into the toilet. He just starts laughing his ass off. Uh, you, man. You've never been on the car trip with your boy farts in the in on the way to the journey and he and he's laughing his ass off. Or he goes and says, Who five, man? I mean, everybody knows it's him. I mean, that fighting is one thing, but pulling out your whole things in front of the man on the holiday, nah. It's I, though, isn't it? I mean, I guess you might be running trains at that, so I guess it's no real I don't run trains, though. <laughs> I don't run trains. <laughs> running trains is, I mean, I mean, that's a hood thing. I mean, not a hood thing, but I, uh, it's not even a hood thing. Even footballers do it. But, um, that's not necessarily... Well, I guess there is that team bonding lads behaviour level as well. Yeah, that's... that's I imagine that that's the only way I can make sense It's mad because you've never experienced one of those moments where your homeboy was proud enough to put his things in front of you. Uh, trust me, I am A-OK with that never happening in my life. Yeah, you don't know until you've been there. Whoa, what's going on, brother? Are you sure you... Do you need a Me Too moment, bro? One time we went to... Um, we went to, I said we went to, we jumped the fence. <laughs> and like, remember I told you, you have to secure a thing so you can sleep. Yeah. We were knocking on doors. My boy was knocking on the door. He was like, can I come in? She was like, why? What are these things? She dragged them in. <laughs> are you, what? Down. It was jokes. She let me in though, but that's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> you should have shown that you're, you're set. You're 10 now, minutes I'm, set, I'm not like that though. I'm not like that. Yeah, I, just, I can't imagine like, like to it. pull out your your things like a like it's the like it's the hotel key card like this is the Tupac used to do that. Tupac used to do that. Yeah. Well, one there's a woman saying how uh, this she was like Tupac was you know they, they were friends and so she, I think she was on one of those you know out of dialogue TVs and she was like her girls were like come and get your boy just show me his dick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but she asked for it at that point. No, she didn't. She said come get your boy. He just showed me. Oh, I thought yeah, you said, yeah. come and get your boy to show me. No, you said, come get your boy. Oh, wow. You're like when you're goofing around and it's just, you just, you just doing my I don't thing. know this, bro. I, yo, you know, school, you know? my whole world did you like, view has been... Did you like, in public school, what did you not do? Like, I don't know, put shower cream on your, sour cream on your balls or something like that and shave it off. Like, what was the banter? The, 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 the private school boys had their banter, but I only ever heard it. I wasn't involved. So what banter did you what banter did you do as a as a young as a young brat? As a young brother. Mm. I mean, we do like maybe a, a a prank call or like run a little have like a recurring joke about somebody. We used to do small things in class like make fun of people's accents and stuff. And we okay. used to do this thing where it's like, you know, when you want to sit down in class, uh just before the teacher comes in. Uh, everybody's agreed that they're going to move just before the teacher comes in, so one person ends up sitting by themselves. Just small things like that. Nothing crazy, nothing mad. It was just small, light, light humour. But I heard that the white boys were, like, put resting their, their, their penises on people's faces when they passed out drunk <laughs> and taking pictures. Um, you know, yeah, um, uh, my friend Stag do, yeah. Obviously, we're, gonna, we're trying to do something to just, you know, some kind of boy shit. But we were like, can we, can we just rush them in the square? But because we were all black and we didn't know what kind of, we weren't sure that, you know, if the police came, they won't really see it as it's just banter. Then we were worried that white boys might see it. We tell them it's just a stag dude and they try and join in and then they take it too far. Like <laughs> <laughs> in your bedrooms. No, no, no. So we ended up just rushing them in the hotel. But yeah, see, this is probably why I don't have a group of lads. No, I, I, I don't understand that as banter, bro. Um, I, I don't know. I don't trust people who don't have a group of lads. You don't have a team with you. You don't have a squad, bro. Uh, well, you when might, you become, when you become you... a successful rapper, how are you going to say, and I brought my boys with me? <laughs> this is it, though. This so is what, you, think, you think you can't be a rapper if you're like a loner? <laughs> 
this is what I'm wondering. Like, there, there must have been at least one loner rapper. I can't really do it like this, man. I ain't really got a crew like that. <laughs> There's got to be one loner rapper. Yeah, I show up in the club by myself. <laughs> exactly. There's got to be one, man. Who but it's always looks good when there's a team in it. No, I, I, don't get me wrong. I love a team. I, I love to. I love the cooperation, the the companionship, the, the camaraderie. Yeah, the taking the L for the take one for the team. Yeah, all of that. I love it. But why the team needs to be centered around seeing man's things and and all this kind of it's mad banter? It's not like we had an itinerary. All right, four o'clock. Remember, it's poor dicks out time. It wasn't <laughs> like. <laughs> Niggas was waved, getting ready for the thing, and your boy just decides to be an idiot. It doesn't. It didn't. The thing is, the only thing is, it got me. That's what. That's why I hate about it. No, no, no. Let me phrase that. <laughs> I was gonna ask more questions. It's getting, was... it's getting sucked into like your boy calls. Whoa, you. whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa, whoa! It's getting dragged into like your boy calls you here, yeah, and you think it's a genuine call. Yeah. And then you turn around, he's got his dick out, and he starts laughing his ass off. You just feel like a dickhead even more. There's one listener. And I'm going to mention his name just now because he doesn't deserve the attention. But his name is Michael. And he's nothing. been... Pardon? Nothing going. And he's been... Nigerian? Yeah. Okay. And he, he's been... Um, so that he'll DM and tell me what he's thought about the pod or whatever. He's your DMs. Nice. And then he'll mention like, oh, yes, yeah, so I'll be back. I just need to quickly go and do some naked kettleball swings. And I'm like... Nick, don't put this damn image in my head. I don't need to hear this nonsense. You might have a problem with images, you know. I, I definitely do. I don't need that image in my head. As for now, to, you, you just love to just it. chuck it into conversation at the most random point. And you'd be like, "Yeah, you know, I got to go do those kettlebell swings," and because he, he knows it's gonna flag up in my mind. I what don't if, need what that. What if the girl said that to him? Why do you use naked kettlebell swings? I don't want her telling me that either. Yeah, Yo, you, that's the last thing I need as a married man. Hope, <laughs> bro. Take, give yeah, that's me problem. fear. <laughs> that's that's give me fear, bro. <laughs> no, I tried to write a bit about that because I had, I had a female friend that was running a banter on me about me like. <laughs> she ran a train on you. Go on. About she kept bantering me about me smashing, and I was like, "When you're you know, married, while I'm married, I don't like that." I know, that's what I was saying, like, I, I, I wanted to try and write this joke about, about how, how cruel it is to make married men feel like they could they could be getting extra poops on the side, especially when they're trying to be, you know, upstanding. Like, you know, because the thing is that it's not that he's going to beat, but it's that in his head, the next time his wife is acting up, he's going to be like, and I could have been beating Saturn right now. That's the, 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 the thing that's unfair about it. Like, don't do that to married you know my men. my number, please, so I can tell her this is wrong. <laughs> but here's the thing though I think I mean it's interesting you say that but I honestly think you know like I don't think if you cheat you're not necessarily an upstanding person I think cheating is always looked at from one angle yeah you left he left his wife you know it's always the guy he left his wife piece of shit but he died yeah. slow and it just ends there no one looked at it from the angle of he was willing to risk everything for this new, this, this new, this new love he's found. I don't think it's new love, bro. It's not new love. There's, isn't there nah. something gallant about that? He gave up everything for you. Isn't that what we want in hero stories? Uh, in some cases, to what be are fair, you willing to sacrifice my family, dog, <laughs> my kids. But you know, most of the time, one thing you cannot say is you don't love me. Oh, I love you. I left my family. <laughs> You know, most of the time, though, mm -hmm. most of the time, mm -hmm. the woman thinks he's going to leave his family and he doesn't because he wants that's to understand. Yeah, no, 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 no. We don't know if he's most of the time. That's the narrative that's been sold. We have not reviewed every cheating case and seen them 10 years later. Like you see on Blind Date, when they go on a holiday and they come back and we get to review what happened. We don't know who's cheating. Well, I, I would infer from some of the statistics that we have, right, that if men... If men's cheating led to them wanting to leave, then they would file for much more of the divorces. Meanwhile, what we have, on, well, at least in America, because I only have the American statistics, is that 70 to 80% of divorces are filed by women. Yeah. So, so there are a lot of men who will cheat and happily still try and make their marriage work or whatever it is, because obviously there are financial penalties and all kinds of other reasons. But yeah. most, on, in, on, the, on the whole, a lot of men realise that 
your side chick is never meant to really be your wife. She's supposed to be a side chick. The moment she becomes your wife, now you need a side chick. The whole <laughs> thing, the, so the, if you go, and, if you're a side chick to a married man and you go and marry him, you're, you're volunteering to be the person that you were, you were helping him cheat on before. Because the, the whole point is, there's something the side chick is doing for him that being his wife doesn't provide. I don't even think that's it, you know. I don't even think that's it. I think, think some men cannot really commit to one woman. I don't even think your wife is, there's not, there's something your wife isn't doing, because there's something your side chick isn't doing. You know what I mean? Because you don't spend every moment with her. You still go back to the wife. It's just I having, know, that's what I'm saying. Having None... the best balance. Okay, that's what you mean. That's yeah. what you mean. It's have, but it's, I guess it's having the best of everything. The moment the side chick gives you a headache, you go back to this. Hey, I don't need that shit. I got a wife at home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just the option of, you know, the, the be able to move freely. Uh, but you're right. Most men know the side chick is not, you know, she's not meant to be your happily ever after. But at the same time, um, like I said, I don't think, you know, cheating makes you, I think we just run with that strong narrative. We never see it from the side of who was willing to risk it all, which is something noble about that person. I don't think it's noble, though. Um, I, I don't think it's noble because uh, I think I think the last the last moment before, before, when it's still noble is before you say your vows. Once you say the vows, everything you do after that for some idea of love in your head is not noble because you made the vows. No one forced you to make the vows. Of course they forced you to make the vows. She forced you to make the vows. But you're going to put a ring on this. Yeah, if, if you're a man getting forced into marriage by women, you've got more problems. You've got more problems. You there's, in this day and age, we're not, where we're not having shotgun marriages, where men are literally putting shotgun to your back like you slept with my daughter. But what happened is the marriages, though. People are, divorced, people are divorcing every five minutes right now. Bro. I know people that had a divorce this year. Yeah, I know. I know. It's, it's wild. It's wild. A lot of people are definitely misusing the institution of marriage. 